my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Monday, July 11th. And just catching you up for what's happened over the weekend and since the shop talk on Friday. Well, I, you know, after the shop talk on Friday, I did get this glued on. And uh, that was the wedge I made during the shop talk. And I showed that one technique of making it with a router. You could do almost the exact same technique and run it through a bandsaw, by the way. And I've done that many times. In fact, I think I've probably done that more than I've done it with the router. But I figured more people have a router and I just show that technique because I think that relates to more people. And the router's probably a little safer in terms of when you get to this really thin edge, your bandsaw could grab that and tear it up pretty bad. But, you know, trial and error. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've got to carve this back to the shape. Now you can see it's sticking out on both sides. So I have to carve this to the neck and all those kinds of things. Um, I've just let it set all weekend, so I just took the clamps off of it a moment ago, so it's been uh, curing this whole time, so it's good and set up. There's no, no problem with that. The uh, finish on the uh, truss rod cover for the old Gibson has uh, cured, and it's fine and ready to be installed. The tuning keys for the old Gibson have not come in yet, so I'm still waiting on that. In terms of uh, what I did over the weekend, well, let's see, Saturday, I had my day plan that I was going to spend most of it on that tractor. Well, that didn't work out quite that way. My wife decided she was going to take all four granddaughters camping, but the problem with that was that the uh, camper hadn't been serviced in a while, so I had to uh, work on the camper pretty much all day Saturday, getting it ready, you know, making sure the air conditioning was going to work. It took me about an hour to get that to, to come on. It just wouldn't come on for some reason, and I don't even know why but miraculously it just came on kind of on its own can't really say I had much to do with that other than I was just troubleshooting everything and all of a sudden it just started working so I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth and then it was kind of similar with the uh, generator on the camper and, and by the way this camper is actually a three horse horse trailer that has a camping uh, area in the front of it so it has a big generator to run the air conditioner and the electric if you don't have electric where you are. Well, she wanted the generator working too. A new battery and a little bit of gas line and uh, working on fuel pumps and rebuilding the carburetor. After I did all that, it worked just fine. <laughs> so that pretty much was an all day project Saturday. And, that, and then, like that wasn't enough, well then I worked on uh, making it a little bit safer with some uh, better safety chain hookup and different things like that too. So I mean, I did a lot more than just those couple of things, but never ending. And so I was so wore out. I started at 6 a.m. Saturday morning to get that ready. And it was 4.30 when I quit, <laughs> 4.30 in the afternoon. And I pretty much worked the whole time. I took about a hour break to run into town and basically ate my lunch while I was in town and uh, picked up a few things that I needed to uh, finish the repairs. But anyway, got that going. So they're all there. I'm batching it, sort of, so to speak. Last night, while I was batching it, I watched a video on a Martin factory tour. Now, you might think that with all the techniques that I've been doing and all the things I've done over the last eight or ten years here on YouTube, that you would probably think that I learned a lot from Martin and or from Gibson and or from other people. Well, the truth is, I didn't really learn anything from anybody other than that um, Roger Simonoff book. I started with the Roger Simonoff book and pretty much from that point on, everything else was just figured out as I go. And that's the truth. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making that up. I, I'm not patting myself on the back either. I just developed my own techniques and just went with it from that point on. If it was working, I'd go with it. If it was working sort of, I'd try to improve it a little more and et cetera and so forth. And then over the last, oh, six or seven years since I've been on YouTube, I have watched a lot more videos and things, and, and that gave me more ideas, and I improved things more. But when I watched this video last night of the Martin Factory Tour, 
I was absolutely amazed at how many things they do by hand that I do almost exactly the same way. And I, I mean, you probably think, oh, he's seen that before or something, and I truly haven't. Last night was the first time I ever watched the video. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description of this so that you can uh, click on it and watch it. It's a good factory tour. I got a kick out of a couple things uh, on it. Um, you know, first of all, the guy that was d leading the tour, and it, he kind of was a lot like me, I think. I mean, he... he it was kind of a matter of fact on how things are done, you know, it's it, it's not rocket science, it's kind of like you just do it this way and that's the way we do it, you know, and that's kind of the way I am. When he got to the custom shop is what made me chuckle, you know, now the custom shop is where they take custom orders from customers and they f fulfill whatever the customer wants, they'll do it, you know. It's not their normal standard practice, you understand. This is their custom shop. This is what the customer is requesting specifically. That was the only place they had hide glue. <laughs> That's because he says some people ask for that. You know, some people request hide glue. Now, I thought that was funny because as big as Martin is and as good as they are, they don't use hide glue on their normal instruments. They just have it in their custom shop so that they can use it if somebody specifically requests it. And I say to those people that specifically request it, oh, you're paying more money for something that you're getting less value out of. <laughs> you're paying more money for something that's going to break. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Yeah, hide glue has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. I mean, it was a great glue back when ox carts were the best form of transportation. Transportation has improved and so has glue technology. Get over it. Glue is much better now than it was back in the 1400s. That's about all I have for today. I hope you'll check out that Martin Factory Tour. I thought it was very good. I'm sure many of you have already seen it. I'm always late to the party on these things. But it did amaze me at how many things they do that are exactly like I do. And it's just that I developed my own technique and my own way of doing it. And it turns out it's just like they do it. I think it's because I do everything with the common sense approach. And apparently so do they. You know, I mean, you eventually get to that when you use common sense. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.